welcome back to the Show Me Center where Southeast Missouri State University is playing host to Tennessee State for this OBC matchup. I'm Lindsay Peters and alongside me is Ashlyn Wyman. Ashlyn, can you tell me who the key players are going to be in tonight's game? Absolutely. For both of these teams, their key players are coming off career high games. Samo has Oscar Cow, whose career high was 15 points, 5 rebounds, and shot 50% from the field against Belmont. He is a team player and a huge help to the Red Hawks. Tennessee State Carlos Marshall, who was their leading scorer last game against UT Martin with 25 points and 5 rebounds. He's a big shooter, a 3-point shooter, and a threat behind the arm with a 50 percentage. Now, Lindsay, can you tell us what the keys to the game are going to be? Yes, the keys to the game are brought to us by Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Designate before you celebrate because fans don't let fans drive drunk. Tonight, Simo needs to find a way to win. Next weekend, they will be hosting Austin P. and Murray State, who both lead the conference with a 3 0 standing. Tigers will keep winning. So Ashton, what can you tell us about the series history? The series history is brought to you by Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. Partner with us to protect Kentucky's wildlife heritage. Between these two teams, Tennessee State leads 27 to 22 in overall history. And last time SEMA won against Tennessee State was at home, December 31st, 2017. And that's all we have for you. Stay tuned for the starting lineup next of Red Hawks vs. Tigers on ESPN+. Plus. to the Show Me Center for Red Hawks basketball. The Red Hawk women just coming off a win and now the men are getting set to take the floor. Tennessee State Tigers are in town and we are right in the middle of the introductions. Coach Rick Ray's squad and they've got highlight video playing. For everyone here at the Show Me Center. The Red Hawk women, by the way, the final score 83 to 54. So a sound win for Southeast Missouri State's women. We'll see how the men fare coming up. David Haas is the voice of the Show Me Center. Let's head over and get the starting lineup for the Red Hawks from David Haas. And now your starting lineup for the Southeast Missouri State. Red Hawks at guard, a 6'5 redshirt senior from Melbourne, Florida, number three, Skyler Hogan. At guard, a six foot junior from Taipei, Taiwan, number four, Oscar Cow. At guard, a 6'1 freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, number 11, DQ Nicholas. At forward, a 6'8 redshirt senior from Mobile, Alabama. Number 10, Quaterius Wilson. And at forward is 6'8 sophomore from Richmond, Texas. Number 23, Sage Tolbert. The Red Hawks are coached by Rick Ray with Keith Pickens, Terrence Crump, and Jason Owen. There are your Banterra Bank starting lineups. Banterra Bank, banking with local style. Mr. David Haas, thank you very much for the announcement of the starting lineups. Eric Sean, along with the Missouri Sports Hall of Famer, Jess Bolin. We are courtside getting ready to go. We welcome everybody that might be tuning in on ESPN+. Plus. It is the Red Hawks and the Tennessee State Tigers. The series history, this is the 50th time these two teams have met Tennessee State Holds a 27-22 all-time lead in the series. Simo has won two of the last three meetings between the two teams. 
Some last minute instructions from Coach Rick Ray, and we will get this thing headed in the right direction. Jess, the Red Hawks are in desperate need of a win. They are 0-3 in conference play. Tennessee State 2-1. No question about it. This is uh, victory's been hard to come by for the Red Hawks this year so far, and this being another home game after losing to Belmont the other night. And this is a must game for the Red Hawks if you ever had one. Simo comes out in the home whites. Tennessee State, a solid record, 10 and 6. They are 7 and 0 at the Gentry Center. But on the road, TSU just one road victory. And that it's a one and six road record. They're two and zero on neutral sites. And the Red Hawks will control the opening tip. The young man out of Taipei, Taiwan, Oscar Cow in the starting lineup. Works the ball out front to DQ Nicholas, a freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. Now it's Oscar with those bright orange shoes. Fall away jumper goes down and Oscar Cow hits his first shot of the night. Oscar scored in double figures for the Red Hawks here in their loss on Thursday. Driving all the way to the basket and scooping it home is Jalen Washington. Washington out of Smyrna, Tennessee listed at 6'9". Talk about being long. He is very long. That size could be a problem for the Red Hawks. Sage Tolbert goes right at him on the block, Washington. Now it's DQ Nicholas. A floater in the lane, and he got the roll. Well, the Red Hawks are getting off to a nice start here. They hit the first two shots of the game and lead four to two. With the basketball, Wesley Harris, transfer from West Virginia. He's actually a graduate student. Grad transfer. Mark Freeman now, the freshman from Memphis, deep on the right wing. Crossover dribble, pulls up over Oscar Cow and missed the shot. Sage Tolbert went up for the rebound. Now Nicholas will run the point, directs traffic to the right hand, gives it up to Sage Tolbert at the right arc. He's holding. Bounces for Oscar Cow, floats down the lane with a left-handed scoop shot, missed it, but got his own rebound. And Oscar resets the offense in the half court. Skyler Hogan gets it down to Quaterius Wilson. Head and shoulder fake, bounces at the feet of Sage Tolbert and a turnover. Jalen Washington kicks it right to Mark Freeman, throw baseline and a little jump hook off the window for Shaquem Johnson. That was a good transition basket for Tennessee State. And the game is tied. 4-4, Skyler Hogan dumps it down to the left post. Sage Tolbert, head and shoulder fake, goes up and scores and one. That's the time that the head and shoulder fake, Eric's going to get him a chance for three because he had the layup without doing any faking, but he stopped and faked and got the defender in the air and then went up for the shot, made it, and gets a free throw. Sage is 61% free throw shooter. And the foul shot is there. Red Hawks take a three point lead on a conventional three point play by sophomore Sage Tolbert. Tigers hook the ball down to the right post. It's Johnson. Feeds it out, left perimeter. Freeman dribbles to the top and tried to hook a pass down to the baseline, and it sailed right out of bounds. He was looking for Shaquem Johnson, but. Well, he thought he was going to break for the basket, and it was a good idea. It would have been a perfect pass if Johnson would have took a couple steps towards the basket. Shaquem Johnson. And Oscar Cow's pass is intercepted, and then DQ Nicholas went back and Got the turnover and took it to the rack and went right at the 6-9 Washington and scores. That's a nice play by DQ Nicholas on both ends. Wesley Harris holding for Tennessee State. Gives it up to Johnson. Comes right back to Harris at the right point. Carrying the basketball is the call on Harris. 
We're just ahead of a media timeout. New player checking in. Is Ben Kone. Kone 6'9, a redshirt junior out of San Francisco, California. He transferred from Oregon State. Kone, the first sub today for TSU. 22 to shoot. Red Hawks have a 9-4 lead. Quaterius Wilson against Kone on the post. Wilson spins, jump hooked it up, and could not get it to fall. Wesley Harris, the rebound, gets out on the run. Michael Littlejohn buries a three from the left arc. Michael Littlejohn. Well, he's a double-digit scorer for TSU. He's from Muskegon, Michigan. Nine to seven. The Red Hawks with the lead. Oscar Cow drives down to the baseline, kicks it right. A three by Sage Tolbert barely got to the rim. Well, he was wide open in the right corner. Little John, a head and shoulder fake. And as he started to drive, I believe Quaterius Wilson may have gotten him. Or DQ Nicholas, let's see. Well, they're calling it on Oscar Cow. All right, we'll take a timeout. Our first media timeout. Red Hawks off to a 9-7 lead here from the Show Me Center. of Southeast Missouri State out to an early 9-7 lead here on Tennessee State. Tigers are three for four from the field, but three turnovers. The Red Hawks four of seven, two turnovers. Tennessee State with a possession. And they work it down to the post. The jumper is an air ball by Wesley Harris. The Red Hawks take the opportunity to get up and run down the floor. DQ Nicholas. On the sideline, picked up by Michael Littlejohn. Little give and go, Tolbert to Nicholas for the finish. DQ Nicholas from Sage Tolbert. That's six points already for DQ Nicholas. And, you know, he gave it to Tolbert, took off for the goal, got it back, and got a good shot. And Nicholas matching up with a five foot, 10 inch guard and Michael Littlejohn. Now, Wesley Harris hits the deck for Tennessee State, and he is shaken up. He's holding his, his face. Yeah. I don't know if he took an elbow in the well, they're mouth gonna, or what. I know they're going to take a look at this. And we'll see if we can get you a replay. Their trainer came out there. And Harris was checking for blood. And I do not think he is bleeding. He took a kind of hard look back at the Red Hawk bench. I don't know if he thought somebody gave him a pretty yeah. good shot, you know, unneeded. See what kind well, of they're never needed. See what kind of replay we will get here. But Harris is going to have to leave the game at least temporarily. Might have some blood. I didn't notice it. You? I didn't notice any. I mean, I noticed there's a lot of well, there's all a lot of congestion all the time down there with the men's games. The guys are big men and they move around so much. Look like maybe on a screen out here at the top of the circle. Officials want to know if they are going to be assessing a foul here or a flagrant foul. I don't believe any foul was called. The Red Hawks are off to an early 11 to 7 lead. And so far, Turnovers have been uh, a major factor. Three for Tennessee State, two for the Red Hawks. So we've got five combined turnovers in less than five minutes. Right now, Simo shooting 63% for the field. The Red Hawks are five of eight. Tennessee State, three for five. And the Tigers have hit the game's only three-pointer. They're done looking at the replay. And normally, we will get one of the officials to come over and explain things to us about what they saw on the replay.
The Red Hawks leading scorer thus far is DQ Nicholas. He's three for three from the field. Oscar Cow has a field goal, two points. Sage Tolbert, a conventional three point play. Well, they're taking a long time looking at the replay here, so we may have something assessed. The coaches are being talked to at the moment. Yeah, it looks like Tennessee State's going to shoot free throws. Don't here. look like Coach Rick Ray's too happy. Carlos Marshall Jr. has checked into the game. He checked in right at that last time out. That's who they'll choose to shoot the free throws. He's an 86% free throw shooter. They say the foul was on Hogan. I think it did. Yeah, that's they've got a foul against Hogan up on the board. So Carlos Marshall, 86%. And he knocks down the first. He's their second leading scorer at 11 points per game. Here's his next free throw. Got them both. You can tell the guys that work on that free throw stroke. 11-9. And the officials What still do you think of the Red Hog uniforms? I think they're the best looking ones I've seen this year. I like them. I do too. Simo in red across the front with black numbers. And the logo right in the middle I, on the leg right around about thigh high. I, I just think they're sharp. We are taking a long time here to restart this game. They're not as long as the old uniforms either. You know, they come down below the knees, yeah. make it look like you got a short dress Basketball on. shorts are getting shorter. And you can pay attention to all the different teams, but they're getting shorter. Not as long as they used to be. And a lot of battling inside. The shot would not go down for Ben Kone. And the Red Hawks get out on the run. DQ Nicholas, swing left, finds Wilson and gives it up to Oscar Cow. Oscar will penetrate and he got bumped by Mark Freeman of Tennessee State. So the foul is on Freeman. The Red Hawks will inbound up by two, 11-9. Carlos Marshall hitting the two free throws after the foul assist to Skyler Hogan. Oscar Cow jump stop in the lane, threw it away. I think he was looking for Sage Tolbert. Rick Ray says, let's calm down. Yeah, because that <clears throat> that's a pass where when you're in the air you ha and then start looking for somebody to pass to, you've already made a mistake. Jalen Washington with a handoff for Little John. He'll drop it right back to Washington, who bounces down low for Kone, and he scores. Kone, his first basket. Here's a three out front by Nicholas, just off the front of the rim. And the rebound pulled down by point guard Mark Freeman. He accelerates into the lane, and it poked loose momentarily, but regains control. Freeman bounces for Washington. And now Michael Littlejohn takes over. Littlejohn has the game's only three-pointer. Carl the way to the basket and laying it in. Carlos Marshall. And Tennessee State has a 13 to 11 lead. That was very easy for Marshall. He got right to the rim. DQ Nicholas tried to get to the rim and had the shot rejected by Kone. And then Kone screamed in the face of DQ Nicholas rather than try and go get the rebound. In the meantime, the Red Hawks score. That's Cal's second foul. Cal will have to check out Jordan Love, Isaiah Gable, and Alex Caldwell have all checked in for Southeast Missouri State. Doctor substitution number ten, Kevin Johnson.
We are tied at 13 with 13.08 to play here in the first. And checking back in, Wesley Harris, he was shaken up earlier. He took that shot to the face from Skyler Hogan. And it resulted in two made free throws for TSU, a steal by DQ Nicholas. Runs the floor, throws it corner right for Alex Caldwell. And now they work the left side with Jordan Love. One dribble, Isaiah Gable tried to lob it down to the post. Wilson, and as he went to get it, the ball is out of bounds. Pass was just off the mark there from Isaiah Gable to Quaterius Wilson. TSU trying to take the lead here. Michael Littlejohn, a little push off, got away with it against Nicholas. Wesley Harris drives inside, head and shoulder fake, threw the ball almost out of bounds. Running it down was Mark Freeman. Tennessee State very lucky that ball didn't get out of bounds. Here's a drive by Freeman, shot blocked by Caldwell. Loose ball, two on the shot clock, and now it's out of bounds to the Red Hawks. Excellent defense by the Red Hawks. They just kept dogging them all over this court down here at this end, and did, they just couldn't get a shot, Eric. There was no open shots in this sequence. Rick Ray got to be happy with that defensive segment. John Brown, a 6'7 junior out of Miami, Florida, is in. He transferred from Georgia Tech. They've got transfers from Georgia Tech, Louisiana Tech, Oregon State, and West Virginia on this team. 13 apiece. Quaterius Wilson is a transfer from McNeese State, called for traveling down on the post. 13 apiece. Wilson. Calling to be replaced, Sage Tolbert coming in for Wilson. And I don't think they're going to allow it at the moment. So I don't think they're going to let Tol – now they'll let him check in, and Wilson will depart. 12.08 on the first half clock. 13 apiece. Michael Littlejohn will bring it. Transferred in from Southwest Tennessee Community College. Littlejohn, their third leading scorer at 11 per game. He spots for a three in the left corner and knocks it down. It's his second three of the game. Six points for Littlejohn. And it's a 16-13 Tennessee State lead. In Tennessee State, the odds makers had them a point and a half favorite for this game. A floater that goes for Alex Caldwell. I'll tell you what, he's getting pretty good at that running floater, Jess. Yeah, the, the, the throw the ball straight up shot and use your momentum to let the ball carry. Yeah, he is. Teardrop runner kind of becoming the signature shot of Caldwell. Lenny Wilkins, you shoot that shot all the time back, back in the NBA. Great hawk forward from Providence University. But he was doing it because Bill Russell and those kind of guys were trying to block it, and Wilkins was 6 1. 16 15, Tigers. Tennessee State has a one point lead, 16 15. Tigers shooting 55% from the field. Six for 11, but six turnovers. The Red Hawks have scored only two points off six turnovers. Simo with the basketball. DQ Nicholas dribbling left, left point. To the top it goes Gable, a three, bang! Isaiah Gable. And the Red Hawks are back in front, 18-16. Boy, he had to shoot that one in a hurry, and he did. And a lot of arch, beautiful shot. That's the first three-pointer for the Red Hawks today. And Little John works it left here to Wesley Harris. Now they work the right side of the floor. A little jab step by Carlos Marshall. Comes into the paint against Jordan Love, and he goes up, lost the ball. Now comes down and does grab the handle, and we get a whistle. And their best free throw shooters going to the line. Nicholas picks up that foul. Hey. 
Marshall already two for two from the stripe. 86% coming in. Only missed three free throws all year until that one rattled out. Skyler Hogan, original starter. Fifth year senior back on the floor for the Red Hawks. Skyler Hogan is a new Papa, Jess. Oh. Congratulations to him. He and Adriana Murphy. That's a famous name around here. Congratulations to them. That's a proud, proud moment in your life. Proud parents. Adriana Murphy, a great four-year point guard on the women's basketball team, has since graduated. Into the lane comes Jordan Love, runs up the shot. It wouldn't go, but the whistle will give him two free throws. Aggressive play there by Jordan Love, the redshirt freshman from Durham, North Carolina. He's at the line to our right with the Red Hawks up by one. And the free throw a little bit short. By the way, if you're tuning in, whether it's on ESPN Plus or the Red Hawks radio network, you can email us and we'll read your emails. Our email address is semoradio at gmail.com. That's S-E-M-O, Semo Radio at gmail.com. Here's a three out front by Harris, a little strong. They fight for the rebound, and it comes into the hands of Skyler Hogan. Ball gets right through the hands of Sage Tolbert, but he will run it down. And the Red Hawks put their half-court offense into motion. Alex Caldwell lobs it for Tolbert. Little alley-oop, missed it, got it back, finds the cutter. Jordan Love for the two-handed throwdown. Good play by Tolbert. He missed that shot. He's way under the goal, got his own rebound, hit it to Love for layup. Uh, he stayed with it, Eric. That's, uh, that's what made the play. 21-17, John Brown plays catch with Little John. Swing it out front for Harris. Between the legs on the dribble. Finds Carlos Marshall, right point. A little push up by Marshall, got away with it and hits the jumper. He got away with a little push off. Here's a three by Alex Caldwell that won't go, but an offensive board. Now Gable steps into one and bangs it home. His second three of the game. That could be good news because when he gets hot, Jess, I mean he can get really hot. Isaiah Gable, Little John with a pull up three, no good. And they get the offensive rebound. The Tigers keep it alive. Nice job by Shaquem Johnson. But then the ball gets loose. Caldwell runs the break. Give it up, Gable, another three, in and out. I don't believe he's quite ready to take that three, do you? I mean, he just got the rebound running down the court and got the ball back. Maybe rushed it a little. John Brown, nice dish on the baseline, but an offensive foul drawn by, guess who? Isaiah Gable. Well, the pass was nice. And Shaquem Johnson, looked like he may have a layup out of it, but Gable drew the charge. Eight thirty-nine on the first half clock. The Red Hawk women were winners here earlier, eighty-three to fifty-four. Tennessee State's women now fall to two and twelve. The Red Hawk women are now ten and five. And the Red Hawk men are in desperate need of a victory. They've lost three in a row. All conference games. Elbow jumper. Caldwell. Caldwell. Boy, he can get that shot off in a hurry, Jess. Well, you, yeah, he can get it off about any time he wants it. So quick. New player into the game. Ravel Moody and the Red Hawks come down with the basketball again with the fast break offense. We'll get a whistle. Alex Caldwell took some contact. Ravel Moody is a junior out of Denver, Colorado, transferred in from Northeastern Oklahoma College. Alex Caldwell, one of the Red Hawks' best free throw shooters, will go to the line. 78% for Caldwell from the stripe. 
Red Hawks have a seven point lead. Make it eight as Caldwell drops the first free throw in. His second is coming up. 8.05 on the first half clock. Got them both. And we're going to get a whistle here and a foul, and that's going to get us to a timeout, 7.54 remaining here in the first half. Southeast Missouri State holding on to a 28 to 19 advantage. Isaiah Gable and Jordan Love, two of the reasons why the Red Hawks are on top. It started from anywhere with Remote Connect. It's a nine point lead for Southeast Missouri State. Red Hawks are shooting 55% from the field. 11 for 20. They are two of six from three. And four of five from the free throw line. Tennessee State basketball out of the timeout. A three by Marshall out front. Little strong Isaiah Gable grabbing the rebound. Second rebound for Isaiah. Mid-range jumper by Jordan Love, and he puts it in. About a 14-footer off the left side. Jordan Love getting a little more playing time now, and him and Cal played the other night quite a bit, and maybe earned him some points. Kone, or I'm sorry, that was Ravel Moody. No, it wasn't. It was Ben Kone. I was right the first time, Jess. Yeah, you thought you made a mistake and figured out you didn't. <laughs> Nine it is was the a lead. It was a mistake to think that. <laughs> Caldwell in the left corner. A three by Hogan is good. And a timeout for the Tigers. First year head coach Penny Collins gets time. Red Hawks with 6.55 to play here in the first half have now opened up their largest lead of 12 points. I like what the Red Hawks are doing to, this afternoon. They're re, when they get the rebound, they're rushing that ball up the court. You notice that, Eric? A little different, maybe a little bit higher speed than what we're used to seeing. Uh, Caldwell or Nicholas or whoever, Cal, when he was in there, they're really rushing that ball up the court and then looking for the shot. And they've hit a per pretty good percentage, 55% of their field goals so far in the game. And they've got a 12-point lead, 33-21, 6.55 to go in the first half. Red Hawks have hit their last three shots. They are on a 12-2 run at the moment. Red Hawks have scored 12 points in two and a half minutes, Jess. Thirty-three twenty-one. TSU with a possession. Little John penetrates, jumps it out to Wesley Harris. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Skyler Hogan. Works around a Kone screen, and a three in the air by Marshall. No good, and rebounded weak side by Jordan Love. Love's pass picked off. Harris going to come in for the two-handed top. A uh, two-handed throwdown, and that was borderline getting called for hanging on the rim, Jess. And traveling also. And Rick Ray was talking with the official over there about maybe one or both of the things you just brought up. Was it a travel? Did he hang on the rim? Now we get something away from the ball. Kone has thrown his hands up. So it is going to be a foul on Ben Kone. He is from San Francisco, California. That... That is one of my favorite cities, Jess. San Francisco is a wonderful city. Never been there. I'd like to go. San Francisco, California, you can go to like a very steep hill. Go to the very top of the hill, there'll be a stop sign there. It's or one, one at the very bottom of the hill, stop sign. And it's San Francisco, though, that's beginning to be a lot of homeless and trashing up the city a lot. Uh, they did a special on it. 
And a free throw goes for Quaterius Wilson. I try to stay positive and not negative, Jess, so well, I wouldn't know. It's a uh, it's sad issue, either way you look at it. The Golden Gate Bridge. I'd like to go to San Diego. I've heard so much about it. Fisherman's Wharf down for San Francisco. There's a free throw that goes for down Wilson. Down the dock of the bay. Dock of the That's bay. Where oldest Reddy wanted to go. That's the Guinness Book of World Records Museum in San Francisco. 35-23, three ball, Harris, no good. Pulled down by DQ Nicholas. Red Hawks get out on the run. Jordan Love down the paint, dropped it baseline for Wilson. Had his shot blocked, but stayed with it and goes back up and scores. Wilson went for the dunk and had it partially blocked. Got the ball back and was able to finish. Ben Kone traveled. Kone didn't know what to do with the ball. That's what happened there. They give him the ball out there around the free throw line. He really didn't know what to do with it. Shuffled his feet. Big man didn't want it there. 14 point Red Hawk lead at the moment. 37, 23, long way to go. 5.33 here in the first half. DQ Nicholas gonna run the point. Gives it up to Jordan Love. Now Hogan bounces left corner for Sage Tolbert. Who whips it to the point for Gable. The ball movement for the Red Hawks. Nicholas stops on the right wing. Fires it inside to Tolbert. And a kick out here. Nicholas starts to drive. Fall away on the way. All over the rim. Lead 39 23. Let's take a timeout from the Show Me Center. Sure. Five minutes, eight seconds to play in the first half. Simo off to a hot start. The Red Hawks holding on to a 39-23 lead. They are on a 6-0 run and have hit five of their last six shots. The Red Hawks shooting 60% from the field. 15 for 25, TSU 43%, nine for 21. Took under five minutes. Here Jalen Washington worked it out to the perimeter. Running the point, Mark Freeman. And Freeman, as he took it all the way to the baseline, got the whistle. And we'll see Freeman head to the stripe. Second foul on Nicholas. BQ Nicholas is going to have to check out with those Reynolds two fouls. Got two guys with two fouls, Cal and Nicholas. Cal has been on the bench for quite a while after picking up his second. Rarely does Rick Ray have anyone out there in the first half with two fouls. Each coach is different. But if you pick up your second foul under Rick Ray, it's usually the end of the half for you, Jess. Yeah, and you know, I'm not saying that I would disagree with that. Might depend on the who the player is. Freeman got them both. You know, maybe if I got a guy that's never fouled out of the game, for instance, you know, I, I may be a little more lenient, leave him in there than I would a guy that's usually in foul trouble. Skyler Hogan plays out front. It's Isaiah Gable. Cross courts it, a kick into the right corner, a three by Hogan, came up short. And Michael Littlejohn will push the action here for TSU. Handoff for Carlos Marshall. Spins, goes to the scoop and missed it. Hogan got the outlet away to Alex Caldwell. Lead pass, Gable, a three ball is off the mark. I'm not sure he was set on that three-pointer. He doesn't air mail many shots. Here is, what's the call gonna be? Traveling the call on Freeman. And with 4.05 to play in the half, back onto the floor for TSU. Shaquem Johnson. The lead is 14 for the Red Hawks. By the way, here's our email address again. 
SEMO Radio at gmail.com. S E M O SEMO Radio at gmail.com. We're under the four minute mark. Jordan Love deep on the left wing. Swings it out high for Isaiah Gable. Finds Alex Caldwell, hesitation dribble, a kick out and a three by Hogan. Little strong from Skyler. Little John the push all the way against Caldwell. The shot was short and it might have been tipped on the way up by Sage Tolbert, but it's gonna get us to a timeout. 3.31 to play before the break. And it is Simo, a 14 point lead at the Show Me Center. fun here the dance cam is going here at the show me center they're playing uh, footloose by Kenny Loggins and they're asking fans to emulate the dance from footloose and Kevin Bacon did and the fans are having some fun here on a Saturday afternoon Heading almost into the evening hours. Here's an update from the NFL playoffs. The San Francisco 49ers hosting the Vikings. And right now, San Francisco, early in the third period, leads at 14 to 10. 7-15 Central tonight. It is Titans at Ravens. Baltimore, best record in the NFL at 14 and 2. And they are riding a 12-game winning streak. Baltimore. But the Titans Ravens. have the best running back in the NFL. Here's a three ball by Jordan Love. No good. And what do we get? A foul going for the loose ball. Quaterius Wilson. Who do you think leads the Red Hawks in fouls? Oh, gosh. Leads them in fouls. Um... Sage Tolbert. He's second. Free throw is good by Shaquem Johnson. Only a 55% free throw shooter. He's got an unusual stroke, but he got them both. May not be the prettiest looking free throw stroke, but he was effective. Two for two. 39-27, three minutes to play in the half. Simo's lead is 12. Alex Caldwell out front. Now they work it to the left baseline. Sage Tolbert draws a double team, threw it away. Here comes Freeman in against Hogan, missed it, and the whistle. They're gonna call Hogan for a foul here, I think, but boy, what a good defensive effort by Skyler. I, I, I didn't see the foul, and that's right here on our end. I'd like to see the replay on it, but that was a great defense by him, I thought. 2.45 on the clock, and we will see Mark Freeman at the free throw line for Tennessee State when we come back. So far for the Red Hawks, hot shooting has propelled them out to this 12-point lead, 52% from the floor, 
15 out of 29. However, the Red Hawks have missed their last four shots from the field. They have not scored in two and a half minutes. And Tennessee State trying to work this lead or the deficit down to single digits before halftime. Two shots coming up. All right, now they're having some communication over at the score table. And in the meantime, M Mark Freeman is being iced. It's like Ike's in the kicker, Jets. <laughs> Not quite. He's standing around waiting for his free throw. So far this season, Freeman 73%. Pretty good free throw shooter. What do you consider an excellent free throw shooter? 90? Oh, yeah. There aren't many guys that get to 90. If you're in the 80s, you are a very good free throw shooter. And that one goes for Freeman. He's three for three from the line Remember today. Bill Bradley? He used to play for the Knicks. You probably don't remember. He's a little too old. He's my age. Senator, made, Senator Bill Bradley. Yes. Yes. He made 56 consecutive in at Princeton. That's pretty good streak. That is an excellent streak. That's an excellent number. You remember that kind of goes with baseball too. Nigel Russell has checked in. He hadn't played in the last couple of games. He had back spasms and that's had double dribble. Flu-like symptoms. Dribble. So he's been Alex the bounced weather. the ball a couple times and then stopped his dribble and then started to dribble again. And if you're Coach Ray, right now you got two and a half minutes to go in this first half. The Red Hawks played really well. And you want to finish off this half. You got a double digit lead. You want to go into the locker room, Eric, with a double digit lead. You don't want to dissipate too much. Here's a cutter to the basket and he cannot finish. Shaquem Johnson. That would have made it an eight-point game. He'd like to have that shot back. Jordan Love penetrates. High runner, no good. Jalen Washington throw it ahead. This time, Shaquem Johnson not going to miss. He throws it down with two hands. And it's an eight-point ball game. They don't need to take a good percentage shot. Quaterius Wilson, left baseline, draws down oh, the assignment, a double team, and he dunks over the double team. Like that. Pretty good percentage shot when you jump up and throw it through. Each team with a dunk. And the lead is back to 10 for Simo. Oh, it looked like he walked. Michael Littlejohn down the lane for the layup. No, and then once the official saw the ball didn't go in, we get a whistle. They gonna get Jordan Love on that? Yep. His first foul. Nice to see Nigel in there, though, isn't it? You know, he's been under the weather quite a bit. Free throw coming up for Little John. And he splashes home the first. That's uh, seven points for Michael Little John. 69% foul shooter. Only made 11 free throws all year. Little John, who leads them and made three pointers. 45. And he got them both. And it's an eight point Red Hawk lead. Tennessee State, 11 for 12 from the free throw line. Quaterius Wilson, one dribble. Gets it to the perimeter. A three by Gable. Ring it up for Isaiah Gable. Boy, they needed that one. And the lead grows back to 11 for Simo. Freeman, a kick out. Little John, head and shoulder fake. Gives it to Freeman. Nice between the legs dribble, fall away shot. No, it was a pass. Down low to Johnson. He spins, shoots, no. And what are we going to get? Basket interference? Yep. 
The ball was in the cylinder and he tapped it back down, straight down through it. Basket interference and a foul. I think Gable is going to shoot free throws here. Well, that's good for the Red Hawks. 11 point so lead, a foul, 47 seconds. A foul must have occurred simultaneously with the basket interference. Maybe he pushed off to tap it through. <laughs> Could have happened. Harris will check out and back onto the floor, Jalen Washington. So Isaiah Gable going to get two free throws here. No, it's should one and one. Official said two, but it's one and one. You look at the fouls. Only eight fouls for Tennessee State. And Isaiah misses the front end of a one and one. Mark Freeman. A handoff for Little John out front against Jordan Love. Penetrates, bounce it back door off the leg of Ooh. Shaquem Johnson. Oh, the Red Hawks are thinking he bounced the ball off his toe out of bounds. Oh. And I, I think they're right. It looked like it hit Johnson. Yes. See if we get you a replay. Looked like that ball was off Johnson. Inbounds play, a lot of contact there, but they let it go. Jalen Washington for TSU, who trails by 11. Nine on the shot clock, 24 on the game clock. A three by Little John is good. That's how that bounce off the toe turns out for you. 11 points, that is the third triple hit for Little John. 10 seconds to play in the half. Jordan Love stumbling around near center court. Give it up, Nigel Russell with four, three. A kick into the right corner, Love. Gable fires at the buzzer, no good. Jordan Love, I, Jess, I think, lost track of how much time was yeah, left. They, they had to. They had to forget what time was on the clock because you can't go down in the corner deep when you're down to three seconds. Not if you're. presented by Booking.com, the world's number one choice for booking accommodations. Like we said earlier, Murray's and Austin P stand at both 3-0 and in the conference. They are both so good and still undefeated and playing right now at this moment. As you can see, though, Belmont, Tennessee State, and Moorhead State, Jacksonville State, and Eastern Kentucky are all tied with two and one records. UT Martin, SIUE both have one and two, where Eastern Illinois, Southeast Missouri State, and Tennessee Tech are all three and oh, oh and three, excuse me, for the conference standings. Let's take a look at this conference scoreboard. So we're having an upset here right now as the Red Hawks are leading 44 to 36. But we also have another upset with Jacksonville State beating Austin P. 
Oh, actually, that just turned around at the second half. So Austin P is now back up by 1.37 to 36. Eastern Illinois is losing to Moorhead State, 69 to 66. UT Martin is coming on top of Belmont, 39 to 34. Tennessee State and or Murray State and Tennessee State, Tennessee Tech start at 7:30, while SIUE and Eastern Kentucky are 72 and 78. Now you mentioned an upset earlier, and one upset we can talk about now is how Oscar Cal took a fall to begin the game and has not been playing much or doing much for the Red Hawks since. That's right. I saw him. He ran, he landed on his back and he kind of slid for a while, but hopefully he'll be back this second half. And now. Championships will return to the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana from March 4th to the 7th. Discounted all session tickets are on sale now for just $60. Visit the Southeast Ticket Office or log on to the OBCSport.com slash Evansville to purchase your all session tickets before the price increases February 2nd. And now that's a wrap. We tune in from next time for the second half of the Red Hawks vs. Tennessee State game here on ESPN+. Plus. Because we have the most listings and constant updates. Come back. So you never miss out on a home you'll love. Around college basketball, Baylor University won at Kansas today for the first time ever. Baylor had never won a game at Fog Allen Fieldhouse until today. And now the... San Francisco 49ers have opened up a two touchdown lead at home over the Vikings with three and a half minutes to go in the third period. 24 to 10. The 49ers leading the Vikings by two touchdowns, Jess. Well, I'd say the Vikings season is about over. A two touchdown lead for San Francisco, the good defense they have. Boy, it would take a lot. Kirk Cousins really how much time left in the game well, three and a half in the third so there's still time oh, yeah they can still make it but Cousins. San Francisco turns the ball over or something it's gonna be difficult the old turnover that can happen yes it can so the Red Hawks are gonna come out their same starting five. And so does Tennessee State. We're ready to get the second half underway. Carlos Marshall will do the honors, inbounds it. Forty-four thirty-six. Around a screen goes Freeman. Plays out front for Marshall. He'll slash into the paint, get all the way to the rim, and banks it home. And all of a sudden, it's a six-point game. Good play by Carlos Marshall. And Tennessee State comes out attacking the paint. Oscar Cow, left of the free throw line. Bounces for Sage Tolbert, works his way down. Jump hook is good and the foul. And you know the Red Hawks want to come out, Eric, and they want to play like they did the first 15 minutes of this game. I thought that's the best 15 minutes I've seen them play this year, period. And then they tailed off a little bit at the last five minutes and then, you know, wound up going with an eight-point lead. But Tober can make it a three-point play. And he does. That's his second conventional three-point play of the day. I'll tell you, they've had some stretches. Jess Simo led at Drake for 30 of the 40 minutes. And Drake is the reigning Missouri Valley Conference champion from a year ago. We're going to get a push away from the ball on Carlos Marshall. Red Hawks will go to work here, try to extend the lead back to double figures. Oscar Cow at the top of the key. Slides it left arc for Tolbert. Now Oscar throw the middle, throw it away. A three in transition, Little John is in and out, and the ball is on the floor, picked up by Quaterius Wilson. Alex Caldwell is gonna come in for Oscar Cow here pretty quick. Wilson, ooh, he's close to traveling there. Thought for sure the whistle was coming. 
Sage Tolbert, left arc. Swings it to the head of the circle here for DQ. Nicholas reverses it back, wide left. Tolbert snaps it out front for Cow. Oscar started to drive and lost the ball. Back-to-back -back turnovers on Oscar. The lead is nine. Carlos Marshall drives the lane, flipped it in, and the foul. For their best free throw shooter, Marshall 86%. And here comes Alex Caldwell. Checking in for Oscar Cow. That last hoop by Marshall has made it a seven point game. Several of the members of the SEMO women's basketball team sitting to our right, Jess. Taylor Pruitt, Jesse Harshberger, Carrie Shepard, Jocelyn Taylor, free throw all over the rim and it drops for Marshall. And suddenly TSU is to within six, 47-41. We have played almost two minutes here in the second half. Alex Caldwell works right around a Quaterius Wilson screen, kicks it into the right corner and traveling on DQ Nicholas. We tick under 18 to play. And a six point lead, a three out front. Little John in and out. Loose ball grabbed by the Tigers. And a foul is going to be called. Great offensive rebound there by Shaquem Johnson. Johnson going to get sent to go to the line. He's only a 55% free throw shooter, but Tennessee State has shot out of its mind from the free throw line today. And that's 12 third, for 13. Third foul on Wilson, Eric. Don't want to lose him, but he's going to be coming out. Johnson, despite being a 55% free throw shooter, is thir three for three today. He'll have one more. He can make it a four-point game with this free throw. And he does. 47-43. Simo only has one shot attempt in this half because of three turnovers. Caldwell dribbling out front. Kicks it right. A three from the wing. Nicholas splash. DQ Nicholas with a big basket, Jess. The Red Hawks needed that one. No, they sure did. I mean, they had, had that lead shot from eight down to, what, four? Back to seven. 50-43, Carlos Marshall. Crossover dribble, pulls up from the free throw line and hits the jumper. Well, it's Marshall's show here. Seven points in the second half already for him. On the baseline, Hogan, a jumper, no good. Red Hawks get back. Good transition defensive rotation there. Here's a drive by Little John, and he lost the ball. He went up. We got a whistle, and they're saying that Little John just lost it. No Red Hawk knocked it away. Jordan Love will check in for Skyler Hogan. And back onto the floor, six foot nine inch Ben Kone. Kone replacing Shaquem Johnson. The lead is five for the Red Hawks, and they've got the ball. Isaiah Gable, left arc for Nicholas, back out high for Gable. 14 to shoot. Alex Caldwell takes over, gets bumped to the free throw line, no whistle. Jordan Love throws it left corner for Isaiah Gable. The pass was too high, so he couldn't get up to shoot. Nicholas, a floater at the shot clock buzzer, and he knocked it down. All right, you got a guy right there that's hot right now. Look to him. Fif Nicholas. 15 for DQ Nicholas. Penetrating inside Marshall, and he continues There's to another sizzle. another guy that's hot. Nine already in the second half for Carlos Marshall. Yeah, we haven't even played five minutes. 16 points for Marshall. 52-47. DQ Nicholas drives the right baseline. Wrap around, and he missed the shot right at the rim. 
Now the other way, Harris lowers his shoulder, runs over Isaiah Gable, and it's a charging foul on Wesley Harris, and that's going to get us to a timeout. Simo, who once had a 16-point lead, now sees a five-point advantage here as we head to the break, 52-47. Can thrive and now there's a way for you to jump in and help when you become a member of kentucky wild we'll work side by side and do our part to keep kentucky wild it's been the carlos marshall show here in the second half for tennessee state marshall now with 16 points six of eight shooting his career high is 25. He did that in November against Alabama A&M. The junior college transfer out of Memphis, redshirted last year. His freshman year at South West Tennessee Community College, he scored in double figures 19 times. And having a big game today, Carlos Marshall was 16. 52-47, the Red Hawks with the lead in the basketball. We're under the 15-30 mark. DQ Nicholas swings it out front. Jordan Love starts to drive to the rim, put it in. Came down the right side of the alley and laid it home. We approach 15 minutes. Freeman pulls up from three-point land. It's off the left side of the rim. Love thrown ahead to Caldwell. He will lose the ball out of bounds. Alex was up in the air and he's trying to get the ball over to Nicholas there, which uh, Nicholas would have had a better shot. Ball just got tipped away and he hit it last, trying to knock it to DQ. Good hustle though, good, good effort. Rick Ray's expression, he was not happy that the Red Hawks did not convert that fast no, break. No, you had to get a shot at least. Michael Littlejohn penetrates inside, spins, drops it for Kone for the easy lay-in. That was a pretty play by Little John. And it's a five point game again, 54-49. Red Hawks leading, 14 and a half to go. Alex Caldwell swings it high for Jordan Love. Leaves it for Isaiah Gable. Right hash mark right in front of the Red Hawk bench. Tolbert will come up to set a screen. Gable screen and roll pass down to Sage. He lost it out of bounds. Another turnover. Red Hawks are really having trouble hanging on to the ball when they get right under the goal. That's two times in a row they were right underneath the goal for a shot and couldn't get the shot off and actually wind up losing the ball. That is four turnovers already in six minutes of the second half for Southeast. The lead is five. Starting to drive there was Jalen Washington. Decided to hand it off for Mark Freeman, who kicks it right for Little John to the free throw line. Backdoor feed Marshall, blocked at the rim by Tolbert. Loose ball ran down by Little John. Four on the shot clock. He launches from 22 feet and oh. banks it in. Are you kidding me? You gotta be. Little John, the shot of the night. And it's a two point game. 54-52, a three by Caldwell, and he's got the answer. Caldwell shushing the crowd. 57-52. 13-17 to play in the game. Kone comes out to set a screen for Little John. Try to turn the corner. Nicholas stays in front of him, and Little John still able to get the runner to fall. Boy, Little John just going to work right there. That shot was a little easier than the last one he threw in. Well, the last, the last one was desperation, let's be honest. 57-54, the lead is three. DQ Nicholas having a big night. Hand off to Caldwell, comes at Kone, gets his shot blocked, a kick out to Nicholas, and the three knocks it down. Nicholas is hot. That's eight for him here in the second half. 18 points for the freshman out of Atlanta, DQ Nicholas. The lead is a half a dozen for the Red Hawks. 60, 54, 12, 25 to play in the basketball game. Mark Freeman plays out front here for Carlos Marshall. Drives inside, finally missed a shot. Red Hawks run, Caldwell. Stops wide left, finds the cutter, Tolbert. Head and shoulder fake went up and drew the foul. Just about got a three-point effort again as 
The ball just rolled off the rim as Sage Tolbert has got two conventional threes in this game. He almost had another one. He's going to go to the line and he'll get two shots. Tolbert will be at the line two on left. Two for two from the stripe today. Free throw rattled out. Tolbert will have another. And knocks it down. Sage Tolbert, who played high school ball down in Texas, he's from Richmond. Fort Bend at Travis High School. Then he played prep school ball at Combine Academy. That is in North Carolina. Here's a backdoor feed and an easy layup for John Brown, who's John just Brown. checked in for Tennessee State. Brown's first basket, and it's a five-point game. 61-56, the two teams trading buckets now. Isaiah Gable between the rings. Slides it right for Alex Caldwell, a kick into the right corner for Love. Back to Caldwell. A three is on the way and will not fall. And Ravel Moody, who's checked in for Tennessee State, tracked down that rebound for the Tigers. Here comes Carlos into the paint. Can't finish at the rim. Carlos Marshall, he went to the floor. He's still down at the other end. He wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Red Hawks missed the shot, but Love gets the rebound. His follow won't go, and now Quaterius Wilson kicks it out to Caldwell. Alex drives, flips it in, in the foul. What a shot. He had no idea. He was on the floor face down when that shot went in. One kind of shot of, from kind of Caldwell. Me a little bit of a hook shot there. I mean, that was beautiful. He'll shoot the free throw when we come back. Media timeout, 11.06 to play. Red Hawks 63, Tigers 56. Big or small, it's better in a Hyundai SUV. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Alex Caldwell, 11 points, three assists, and a highlight reel finish a moment ago. Drew the contact, and he's going to be given an opportunity for a three-point play. Caldwell, one of the best free throw shooters the Red Hawks have. 78%. He's two for two in this game. Here it is. Got it. Three-point play for Caldwell. And the Red Hawks got that second half original lead there in the first half, eight points. 64-56. Ravel Moody started to move in, and we got a whistle. Jordan Love fouling Moody. We tick under 11 to play. Tennessee State with a basketball. Little John with eight to shoot, top of the circle. Accelerates into the lane, blocked by Caldwell. Caldwell blocked it. DQ Nicholas running the other way. A lot of contact. The, the ball comes to Wilson, and he gets his shot blocked. Wow. Man, Nicholas was knocked all over the court. Well, they let him play there, didn't they? Into the lane comes John Brown, and the shot will go down. John Brown, second field goal. And it's back to a six-point Red Hawk lead, 64-58. Jordan Love dribbling out front. Gives it up to Caldwell. Skip pass to DQ in the left corner. Nicholas penetrates the lane, bounces out wide right for Jordan Love. He'll slash into the alley and bounce it for Wilson down on the right block, and he got hammered. Sir Kim Johnson got him. Boy, he didn't have a chance in the world to make that shot. He went, he went up way deep on the baseline behind the backboard, 
no chance to make the shot and got fouled. So this could turn out well for the Red Hawks. Quaterius Wilson. Knocks down the free throw. That's his first point on the second half. Remember, he had 10 points in the first half against Belmont Thursday and did not score in the second half. So this is his first. Coach Rick Ray's got him going a little bit more offensive, though, and I like that, don't you? Yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's got some pretty decent moves inside. He can score. And Tennessee State going for the loose ball after the missed free throw, and the ball's out of bounds. Looks like that ball may have been knocked out by TSU, but they'll get the call here. A couple of the Red Hawks thought it was. 65-58. The lead is seven for Simo. We're midway through the second half. Leaning in with a tough angled shot was Washington. And it's off the mark. Red Hawks come the other way. Jordan Love kicks it right for Caldwell. Fall away three. Knocked it down. Knocked it down, and he got knocked down, but no whistle. And Caldwell and Nicholas are playing well, aren't they? I mean, they are really into this game. 68-58. Caldwell is all over John Brown. Little John drives on Love. Help defense from Caldwell, so they give it to Brown. His runner is short, but he got his own rebound. Goes back up and can't finish. Wilson clears for the Red Hawks. Under nine to play. Jordan Love skips it right corner. Nicholas, DQ, started to drive. Fans it out for Love, who dribbles down to the left baseline. Through the lane pass, intended for Gable, thrown away Not by a good Love. pass, not a good pass. Too, many, too, too many bodies. Yeah, too many people in between that pass getting to its destination. Destination. I like it. 68-58, a three. Washington drills it. Jalen Washington, and we've got a timeout, full timeout. 8.24 remaining, 68-61. Simo leading Tennessee State at the Show Me Center. And on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. 68-61, Southeast Missouri State leading Tennessee State in this Ohio Valley Conference game. TSU 2-1 in conference play. The Red Hawks are 0-3 with each of their losses by 20-plus points. But today, the Red Hawks have a seven-point advantage. We mentioned earlier, the odds makers had Tennessee State Favored by a point and a half in this game. 68-61. Oscar Cow has checked back in for the Red Hawks. He's got it out front. Swings it right arc for Jordan Love. Got it right back to Cow at the head of the circle. A pass to the left baseline. It's Nicholas. Bounces out for Gable. Lost it. Unforced turnover. Gable just never reeled that in. And at the eight-minute mark, it is a media timeout. The last timeout was a called timeout. So the Red Hawks will turn it over going into the timeout leading 68-61. Family of SUVs. Eight minutes exactly remaining in this Ohio Valley Conference matchup. Earlier today, it was the SEMO women knocking off Tennessee State by 29 points. And the Red Hawk men would love to make it a doubleheader split. Rika Patterson's squad now 10 and five overall, two and two in the Valley. Three ball by Washington, he's hit two in a row. Red Hawks are gonna have to extend the defense to the six foot nine Jalen Washington. He came in a 50% three-point shooter. 11 for 22. Jordan Love drives inside, and Carlos Marshall going to be whistled for the foul. Or I'm sorry, that's not Marshall. Emmanuel Egbuda, who has just checked into the game. You know, Eric, it's... Three 
And Jordan Love misfires from the free throw line. That is the third missed free throw in the second half for SEMA. They lost the game at Drake from the free throw line. That one goes. That's eight points off the bench for Jordan Love. 69-64. Red Hawks holding a five-point lead. Mark Freeman, a lot of dribbling out front. Gives it up, and a three, banks in! Carlos Marshall banking in a triple. Two banked in threes today. That's, Unbelievable. I, I don't know when I've seen that to last. And Tennessee State has pulled it within two. 69-67, Nicholas penetrates. Works it back out to the perimeter. Jordan Love finds Cow out front. Oscar slided right to Love, a play to the top of the key. DQ Nicholas throws it away. <laughs> Missed free throws, turnovers, and banked in threes. The story of the second half so far. And Tennessee State, who was once down by 16 points in the first half, can tie it or take the lead this trip. Tigers have call, come all the way back. A handoff out front, Carlos Marshall. Plays right for Jalen Washington. Tolbert will come out to guard the three-point line. Pass into the middle for Igbuda. Fall away shot in the lane, no, and then a whistle. And a foul on Quaterius Wilson. That's four. And the Tigers could tie it from the free throw line. Emmanuel Igbuda. Second lowest free throw percentage on the team, 44%. Out of the Bronx in New York, Egg Buddha with his team down by two. Misfires. Spells his last name E G B U T A, Egg Buddha. Quaterius Wilson sits down with the four fouls. Isaiah Gable back out there. Egbuda, his second free throw to make it a one-point game. And he missed it. And the ball is tipped out by Jalen Washington of Tennessee State. So Egbuda could have tied it, but he missed both free throws. He will check out. The Red Hawks holding on to a paper-thin two-point lead, 69-67. Here comes Alex Caldwell. Slides it right for Jordan Love as the Red Hawks try to extend their lead. I don't know about you, but I'd just soon have Caldwell or Nicholas take the shot. Nicholas out front. Nicholas has 16 points in the game. Caldwell with 15. Isaiah Gable gives it up to Love. Now Isaiah, top of the key three. That's off the front of the iron. 5.50 and change. 5.50 to play. 69-67. The point guard, Mark Freeman. Crossover dribble, comes down to the right baseline, floats it up for the tie, and he missed it. DQ Nicholas brings the rebound across center court. Nicholas works left around a screen between the rings. Throws it sideline left for Alex Caldwell, who dribbles out front. One hands a pass to the wing for Love. Now a kick, a left corner three. Nicholas off the front of the rim. Ball tipped out by Tolbert. And it will go the other way. Well, they've been playing a little zone defense down there. They got the ball to Nicholas on the sideline, and he had a really good look. But just hit the front of the rim. Jess, we're getting word of snow in southeast Missouri. I can do without that. Five minutes to play. Red Hawks by two. Jalen Washington, a three in the right corner is no good by Carlos Marshall. Marshall with a chance to give Tennessee State the lead, but it didn't go. Here comes Alex Caldwell for the Red Hawks. Out front, gives it up to Sage Tolbert, top of the circle. Now a handoff for Nicholas. Now it's Gable out front. Snaps it right. Caldwell drives down to the right baseline. Throws it off the back of the backboard. 
So it must have hit one of the Tigers and then the back of the backboard because they're giving the ball to Simo. Skyler Hogan will check in for Jordan Love. Two point lead, 435 to go. Skyler Hogan has not scored, Jess. He is one of the best shooters the Red Hawks have. Maybe Hogan's the guy that's going to make a big shot. Inbounds play, Sage Tolbert missed it at the rim but got the foul. Simo's lead is two, 69-67. 4.34 remaining. And we'll see Sage Tolbert. Well, free throws get critical now. Engineering technology major, Sage Tolbert. Free throw is good. That extends the lead to three. This to make it a two possession lead with 434 left. And the free throw goes down again. Two big free throws for Tolbert. 71-67. Red Hawks with a four point advantage. Carlos Marshall. Gave it up, Mark Freeman. Now Marshall again. Drives into the paint against Caldwell. Flipped it in, but they're going to call a held ball before the shot went in. And the alternating possession arrow gives it back to the Red Hawks. 4.17 and counting and a timeout call. So we're going to get this timeout, then we're going to get the media timeout. So let's step aside from the Show Me Center. This one's a pretty good game. Simo holding on to a four-point lead. Snowing in St. Genevieve. Listening in San Rafael, Canada. Well, Josh, you got the right idea. Got four three pointers from Nicholas and Caldwell. Those two guys have really shot well today. Red Hawks had that eight point lead at halftime. It's down to four, 417 to go. And the Red Hawks do have the ball. They need a couple trips down, Eric, where they score. Some full court pressure here by Tennessee State. And Nicholas will walk it across center court. In the center jump circle. Dribbles left, kicks it to the top for Caldwell. He'll pull up from 18, and the jumper, no, right through the hands of Isaiah Gable. Carlos Walker, deep on the left wing, works down to the left baseline. Now throws it out front for Little John. 
Gives it up to the point guard. Mark Freeman. Dribbles right, a handoff for Walker. Walker has been the hot hand here in the second half for Tennessee State. Now it's Wesley Harris, a three, and he rattles it home to make it a one-point game. Big shot by Wesley Harris. Red Hawks lead is one with 3.18 to play. We've got a media timeout at the next dead ball. Nicholas behind the free throw line, lost the handle, poke loose, goes to the floor, and got it away to Gable. Cross courts it for Caldwell. Here's a three, it's good, but he was out of bounds when he shot it. Caldwell stepped out of bounds even though he hit the three. I don't know if you noticed or not right in front of us, but DQ Nicholas bumped heads with a Tennessee Tiger, and he really, he it really hit hard. I don't know, he kind of shaking his head as he went down. Might be a guy to watch. Tennessee State can take the lead. Mark Freeman finds Walker on the left side. Walker slashing inside, fans it out to the top. Mark Freeman, he'll back it up with eight to shoot. Starts his approach to the left wing, pulls up for a three, way off the mark, offensive rebound. A three by Little John Good at the shot clock buzzer. And the Tigers have taken the lead, 73-71. Little John with a huge triple. He's got 19 points. Red Hawks with a possession here. DQ Nicholas, left hash, dribbles out front, releases a pass for Sage Tolbert, eight to shoot. No one's attacking for the Red Hawks. Alex Caldwell swings it left for Skyler Hogan, got bumped. Got bumped by Harris. And that's going to get us to immediate timeout. The Red Hawks, who have led the entire game, uh, find themselves down by two with under two minutes to play. So we will not have another immediate timeout. The last timeout that was called was close enough to the four-minute mark. They considered that the final media timeout. And now the officials are... At the scores table, one of them is. Is Skyler going to get a, a free throw? Yeah. Well, let's see. Well, he did get fouled. The ball went out of bounds. Yep. I thought they just yeah, called it out of bounds. Yeah, that's team foul number eight. That's going to be a one-on-one -on -one for Hogan, who has not scored in this game. I, th I got him for a three, Eric. Do you? Yeah, I got him for a three in uh, late in the second, our first half. I don't know what the score sheet's got. Yep, they got him for a three. You were correct. <clears throat> well, so, we need a two right now, two free throws. Red Hawks down two. Hogan knocks home the first foul shot. Red Hawks down by one. Skyler Hogan eyes it, flies it, ties it at 73. Big clutch free throws for Hogan. And we're all square with a minute 49 to go. 73-73. Mark Freeman dribbling out front. Guarded by Alex Caldwell. A kick out Little John, a deep three. Rattled halfway down and out. An offensive rebound, but he pushed off to get it. Shaquem Johnson. And will walk the other way to shoot free throws. And it's going to be Sage Tolbert. These are the pressure shots. No, it's going to be... Quaterius Wilson. Yeah, These it was are the Wilson pressure they, free throws. It's Wilson they pushed off. Make Wh that first one at least. Wilson you know. is three for four from the line today. He's one and one still yet, isn't it? This to put the Red Hawks on top, and he missed it. Here comes Little John. Plays out front for Freeman. A minute 30 to go. We're tied at 73. In the center check circle, Mark Freeman. Dribbles left, behind it, throws it underneath, and a miss layup by Tennessee State. Wow. Oh, nobody would near him. Nobody within five feet of him. The Red Hawk defender fell down. He was all alone, Johnson, and he missed it. Unbelievable. What, what a, a break. That has got to work for you, Eric. 
Sage Tolbert plays catch with Hogan. Swing it left to Nicholas, 10 to shoot. 56 seconds to play, we're tied. Caldwell, a triple. Little strong and the rebound to Johnson. And we've got 47 seconds left in a timeout by Tennessee State first year head coach Brian Penny. Collins goes by the nickname Penny. In honor of uh, his favorite player growing up, Penny Hardaway. Now the head coach at the University of Memphis. 7373. Jess, if you want a drama, I think we got a little here. It's been a good ball game. Uh, Red Hawks jumped off to a really big lead. Uh, I don't remember how much they had at one time. 16, 16 is their largest point lead. lead. And they chopped it to eight at halftime. And then TSU has come on here in the second half and hit some unbelievable shots, banked in threes twice. They, you don't hardly see one of them every five games, but uh, they made them and that's all that counts. And the, the break the Red Hawks have got right now, Eric, is the, the uncontested under the basket shot that was missed by TSU, or they'd have the ball with a two point lead. I could not believe that. Cause it, you know, like said, there was nobody near him. Simo needs a stop. Tennessee State needs a bucket to take the lead. 20 second differential between game and shot clock. Shot clock at 16, Freeman bounces high post here for Carlos Walker. Walker turns against Hogan, still dribbling, and Skyler Hogan fouled him. It's only team foul number five, no free throws. 29 seconds left, 20 on the shot clock. Here's where you need a, a stolen inbounds pass if you're the Red Hawks and the clock is set up perfectly to take the last shot of the game. So it'll be Mark Freeman inbounding the ball under the Tennessee State basket. Freeman looking, looking, lobs it for Carlos Walker and he's fouled. That'll be the sixth. It's on Tolbert, and again, the shot clock reset to 20. Game clock at 28. Inbounds play to Johnson. Now Jalen Washington will hand it off for Mark Freeman. 13 seconds left on the clock. The shot clock, 10. He's near center court. He approaches with six to shoot. Tie game. Freeman, a kick out. Little John, a three for the lead. Off the mark. Loose ball. Grab by Walker, and he sticks it in with six seconds to go. The Red Hawks could not get a defensive rebound and it cost them the lead. And Simo will draw up a play with 6.6 .6 seconds to go and the Tigers will defend it. Wow, what a clutch shot by Walker. He was in the right place at the right time to get the offensive board. Yeah, rolled around the rim and shot off, and there was Walker to put it back. That's a tough break if you're a Red Hawk fan. 21 points for Carlos Walker. 14 of the 21 Jazz have come in the second half of this game. 6.6 .6 seconds. And Jess, you start talking about who your best shooters are. Skyler Hogan comes to mind first, but your hot shooter today has been uh, Caldwell and Nicholas. Yep. And you know, a lot of the way you can figure this, a lot of teams say, well, put your head down and drive for the basket, you know, and just go on all the way to the basket. You need two points is all you need anyway, and you're probably either going to get a free throw or whatever. Or with only six seconds to go, you might, you might take a three just by necessity, you know, just because you don't have time to do all these things. And the three-pointer, one thing about it, if you make it, you win the game. It's going to be interesting to see what the Red Hawks got drawn up here to do. But they're, they're going to have to go the length of the court. So I, I really, with six seconds to go, you can easily do it. But I would, I would probably think this is going to be a three-point shot. 
6.6 seconds. Some guys don't like to take this shot. Alex Caldwell does. I don't he think it bother, bother Alex would, or Nicholas. He would be the guy. Here's Caldwell. He's got it. Comes across center court with three, two, one. He doesn't shoot. He passes, and the Red Hawks lose. Caldwell did not shoot it. He passed it, and it was too late. And that's the way this one goes. The Red Hawks led for 33 minutes.